Nick Anderson. I'm Vice President of Sales here at RMIS. Welcome to today's webinar. I appreciate you being on the call. We should have you in and out of here in uh, just a little bit over 30 minutes. Uh, we're going to cover a number of different things on today's call. First off, I'm going to give everybody a kind of just a quick understanding of uh, the type of work that my company does, uh, who we are, where we're located, what kind of products we build, uh, just so everybody gets an understanding of exactly uh, what RMIS does. Uh, then we're going to get right into the vendor compliance program that we have built specifically for Morgan communities. So we're going to take a look at the vendor registration portion of the website. We're going to take a look at the client menu, how you as a manager can log in and uh, uh, look at vendors that have signed up for your location, uh, print out documents, run reports, see who's certified, see who's not, uh, find additional vendor resources. There's a lot of things that you can do within the client menu that we're going to cover. Uh, we're also going to talk about the startup process, what's going to be happening towards the end of this week as far as the website going live, how we're going to be contacting all of your current contractors. Uh, before we begin, just want to do a little bit of uh, a housekeeping here. Number one, uh, as in most webinars, you're in listen-only mode. I can't hear you. Uh, I encourage you to take advantage of the question box that's on that GoToWebinar module. Uh, that's the place where you can ask any questions that come up. Uh, I'd encourage you to do this as we're looking at a particular slide or a portion of the website, as opposed to saving your questions till the end, and then we have to kind of backtrack. Please feel free to interject anytime you have a, a thought, a question, a concern, and uh, I'll be happy to address it. Uh, another thing that I'd like you to do, if there's more than one of you that are sharing a monitor uh, and watching the webinar, uh, please just go and type in your name and your property in that question box, and then when we're done here, I'll be able to send an attendee report over to Morgan, and you'll get credit for being on today's call. Uh, so uh, let me know if anybody has any questions with regards to those topics. Otherwise, we're going to get uh, right into the PowerPoint and give people some just quick information on RMIS. Okay, so we've been in business for 21 years. Uh, we, we do work with a number of companies in your neck of the woods. Uh, I know you have properties in upstate New York. That's actually how uh, you guys have been referred over to RMIS. So a lot of the vendors that you're working with now are probably already familiar with us. Uh, we work with home properties. We work with Conifer uh, and a number of other uh, customers of ours that are based up there in New England. So your vendors are going to be familiar with who we are. Uh, again, we've been tracking vendor insurance and background information for about 21 years. Uh, our programs are custom built, so we build these products from the ground up based upon the client's requirements. So everything that you're going to be taking a look at, taking a, a look at here in the next few minutes, this is all built around Morgan's requirements, your insurance requirements, uh, your vendor agreement, uh, the background screening options that you want. This is all built around Morgan. Uh, so our company is located here in the Los Angeles area. We're actually based in Westlake Village. We're entirely under one roof. Uh, if you have a question or a concern or you need customer service or your vendor needs some help registering over the phone, our call center is located here. Uh, we also do data entry. We have our operations group. We do audit. Our development team, everybody is located on site. So what have we built for Morgan? There's a website called morganvendors.com. Right now it's in test mode. We're going to be taking a look at that here in a few minutes. Uh, but uh, towards the end of this week, this website will be going live, and you'll be able to just go to morganvendors.com, and you can log in, and you'd be able to run reports. Uh, also, uh, Friday evening is when the site will be live. Your vendors can actually start registering uh, right online. So the process of getting all of your current vendors into the website, most of this is actually on RMIS. We're going to be managing that. Uh, so we do have a current list of all of your active vendors, and these are vendors that have been paid by Morgan in the last year or so. Uh, we will be inviting them to register. A letter will be sent out by us towards the end of this week with specific instructions on what your vendors need to do. Uh, it's going to have the website address where they need to go. It's going to have a, a list of bullet points of things they need to provide as they're registering. It's going to have our phone number on it if they have any questions. We also have 
Spanish speaking staff as well. So if you have a Spanish speaking vendor and they need some help, we are here to assist. So again, all of your current vendors will be invited to register by RMIS. A letter will be going out. Uh, we usually do two rounds of letters to try to get the majority of your suppliers into the system so we can get them certified. All of the new vendors beyond what we're working with now, these are vendors that need to be referred to the website by you as a manager. Uh, you're the ones that have exposure to these workers and get referred to a new plumber or a new electrician. Uh, it's real easy uh, to refer them over. You just say, hey, Mr. Vendor, please go to morganvendors.com, sign up. You do need to get certified uh, if you want to provide service to us going forward. Uh, now, this is only for on-site vendors. So this is going to be for a, a plumber, a roofer, an electrician, uh, a vendor that's stepping foot on the property that's uh, fixing stuff, that's uh, fixing wires, uh, drains, faucets, doing landscaping. The actual on-site workers, they are all required to register and become certified. Your off-site vendors are not. Your off-site vendors are going to be uh, uh, an accountant, an attorney, an advertising company, maybe a printer, somebody that you guys do use from time to time, but they never actually step foot on the property. So these kind of vendors are not going to be required to register. It's only the on-site guys. Normal registration steps, vendors are providing contact information. They're going to be selecting locations where they provide service. This is going to be your property list. They're going to be providing producer information. Producer is just another name for an insurance agent. Uh, we do not need vendors to upload a copy of an accord form or to send us an insurance certificate. We're going to work directly with their insurance agent to request it and get it approved, uh, meaning that we're going to make sure it meets all of Morgan's requirements. Uh, we'd also prefer you as a manager not to send us certificates and try to refrain from getting too involved in dealing with the insurance agent. It's much more efficient if RMIS can be the single point of contact with the insurance agent, providing them detailed instructions on what needs to be sent back to us in order for us to get that vendor approved. We copy the vendor on all the communications, so they're going to be made aware of exactly what we're doing, but most of that legwork can be handled between us and the insurance agent. There's an agreement that the vendors are going to be signing as they're registering. This is an agreement between the vendor and with Morgan. It has nothing to do with RMIS. All we are is the, uh, the compliance company that is housing the signed agreement. We're going to be showing it to them. There's going to be a place for a digital signature. It's just a check in the box. But again, it's between the vendor and with Morgan Communities. Uh, this is important because you as a manager might get a phone call from a, a contractor saying, hey, I'm registering and I see this agreement and I really don't want to sign it because I don't know who RMIS is. You just need to convey to the contractor that this is an agreement between Morgan and you, Mr. Vendor, and it is a requirement. So we're going to take a look at that agreement here in a few minutes. Contractors are also going to be completing a W-9. They can do this electronically. We have a digital document that's IRS approved. So we're going to be able to hopefully uh, eliminate this paper that you guys are having to generate now. They can do this right online. We will also be verifying the tax ID uh, against the IRS information. So a contractor fills out a W-9, we take the tax ID or the social security number that they provided on the document, we combine it with the legal name that they had put on the W-9, which should match the information on file with the IRS, and that gets sent over, and the IRS will either tell us, hey, this is an exact match, or it's not. If it is not a match, it's up to the vendor to log back in and complete their W-9 again so we can do a check. And this is something important because at the end of the year, at 1099 time, uh, the accounting group likes to have all the W-9s complete and accurate against the IRS data. And this TIN verification is going to be able to provide that to you. Uh, you will find that about 15% of your contractors are going to fail this W-9 uh, through uh, sometimes not really a, a fault of their own. They just mistyped a tax ID or, or put in a wrong legal name. Uh, and the vendor is made aware of, hey, you, you messed up your W-9, can you please go in and fix it? We just need to need them to provide the proper legal name and the proper uh, tax ID, and we'll, we'll show you that here in a quick minute. 
Uh, vendors are also going to go through OFAC screening. Uh, OFAC is Office of Foreign Assets Control. Uh, most uh, residential and commercial management companies are doing OFAC screening on their uh, on the vendor company principles. Uh, OFAC stands for, excuse me, OFAC is for uh, things like money laundering, uh, terrorism, uh, narcotics trafficking, and we'll make sure that none of the principles are on that OFAC list. Uh, the final step for the vendor is to make a payment. There is a one-time, excuse me, there is an annual payment of $95 that the vendor will make each year. Uh, it's not a per property charge, so the contractor can be working on 30 or 50 or 150 of your locations. Uh, and the fee is going to be the exact same. Uh, vendors can always add properties later. If they forget to add all the properties where they're actually performing service, they can do that later. There is no additional fee. And this is an important step because Morgan's rules are different at the property level. Just because a vendor is certified at one property does not mean that they're going to be certified at other locations. So you need to do two steps. You need to make sure the vendor is certified and then make sure the vendor is certified at your location because there's different additional insured wording that needs to appear on the certificate. And we're going to get into that here in a few minutes. Okay. Here's the Morgan website. Again, it's morganvendors.com. Hopefully everybody can see that up on your screen. This is a welcome message that has been customized by Morgan. These are all of the Morgan community, community's business rules right on the homepage. We have our phone number at the bottom. We have an email. We also have a fax. We also have an online chat. And we provide live customer service, as I mentioned. Our hours are 6 to 5, Monday through Friday. That's Pacific time, so that's 9 to 8 Eastern time. And again, we have bilingual staff here. So if you do have a Spanish-speaking vendor, we can provide them support. Vendors click a button to begin registration, and now they're going to go through an online registration, which should only take them anywhere from oh, 8 to 10 minutes. I'm going to try to go through a registration here as fast as I can, just to give everybody an idea of exactly what the vendors are going to be providing. So it's going to be business information, business type, if we have employees or not. If we have a, a EPA certification, we can enter that in here. We're going to be providing an address. City state zip, we can indicate if we're a small business or minority based business here. Uh, corporate contact, put in a phone number, cell phone, fax, and an email. Remittance address, we can indicate if it's the same as the corporate or if it's different, the vendor can type it in here and we'll go to the next step. Vendor type. Now, for Morgan communities, the insurance requirements are the same regardless of the type of work that the vendor does. But we still like to have the vendors identify their vendor type so you can use the client menu to go search for all of your landscapers or janitors or uh, um, handyman, and you're going to be able to do this. So I'm going to go say I do plumbing. Vendors can add more than one vendor type if they'd like. Next step for the vendor is to provide uh, the locations where they provide service. You can search, you can sort through the property list by city, by state, by zip code. Contractors can go in here. I'm just going to select three different properties. Remember, it's not a per property charge, so there's no additional fee uh, where the vendor's going to have to pay us. That question will come up from time to time. They might call you and say, hey, do I have to pay RMIS every time I add a property? Uh, no, they don't. But it is important for a vendor to select the proper locations where they provide service to, again, because Morgan's requirements are different at each property. There's specific wording that needs to appear based upon the properties where the vendor has selected. So I'm going to submit these and we'll go to the next step. Here's a copy of the agreement that I had mentioned before. Remember, this is an agreement between the contractor and Morgan Management. So it's your name right here. There is no RMIS information in this agreement. We are requiring a signature before the contractor can go to the next step. Uh, we will house the agreement. It, it is a rule. They do need to sign this in order to be certified. But it's between Morgan and the contractors. So I'm going to go to the bottom, and I'm going to sign the agreement. We'll go to the next step. Producer information, 
produces another name for an insurance agent. So the vendors are going to tell us who their agent is. They're going to provide a fax, excuse me, a phone number, a fax, an email, and a policy number. Uh, this is usually the only place where a vendor gets stuck during registration. So if you're talking to one of your vendors, you're referring them over to your website, to our website. Uh, if you let them know to have a certificate in front of them when they're registering, that would be great because then they'll just be able to type in the name of their agent, the phone number, the policy number. Most people don't remember that just right off the top of their head. The additional coverages are required uh, besides general liability are commercial auto and workers comp coverage. If they're with the same agent, they can just say, hey, same as my general liability agent from the drop down, and then they can go to the next step. Insurance information. So the insurance information, this is a list of all the requirements that Morgan Communities is going to be requiring the vendor to meet. Remember, this is not an RMIS requirement. This is between you and the vendor. These are the coverages, the limits, the categories that need to appear on the certificate. So we will send this over to the agent. We will copy the vendor on the communication. We do like the vendor to see this before they get to the payment page because we're trying to avoid a vendor signing in, making a payment, and then calling us back and saying, you know what, I don't have this $3 million GL. I only have a half million dollar GL requirement, so I don't think I'm going to be able to sign up for Morgan. We're trying to prevent that. So we show the contractor, here's exactly what's going to be required. And we signed up for three properties, and this is the additional insured wording that needs to appear in order for the vendor to be approved at all three of these locations. This is a common reason for a vendor to be non-certified is mistakes with the additional insured wording. Our auditing team will look and make sure that things like Canterbury and Rochester and this address are all listed and they're correct. If they're not correct, we will send a revision request to the agent with the corrected information. Uh, hopefully they can make that fix on the second attempt, but it doesn't always happen. Insurance agents are you know, creatures of habit. They can make the same mistake over and over and over. We understand that can be frustrating to a vendor to kind of sit and have to wait in order to be approved. But from Morgan's standpoint, this is an important step. We do want to make sure that all of these contractors are fully compliant with your requirements. Just in case there is a claim, you want to make sure that you and your managers and your properties and your owners are all protected, uh, and this is the best way to do it. So we're going to go to the next step. W-9, pretty self-explanatory what's happening here. We're filling out an electronic W-9. This is IRS approved just like the form, and the contractor, the vendor, will type in their social or their tax ID, and we will make sure that the tax ID and the name on line one match the IRS records. And again, you could expect about 15% expect about of your vendors are going to fail this step, so they're going to have to come back in to the vendor login section after registration and fix their W-9. And we get, it's one of the most common questions vendors call up hey, I, my W-9 failed, what do I need to do? So we explain to them what needs to be done. We can't tell them what their tax ID is or what their legal name is. That really is their responsibility. But we do, we do tell them, hey, they have to match. So look up exactly how you guys are, are, are listed with the IRS so we can clear that W-9. So I'm going to sign my document. We'll go to the next step. Principal information, this is where we do the OFAC screening. Remember we talked about the Office of Foreign Assets Control on the company principals, and principal is somebody with 30% ownership or management of the firm, so we'll make sure that uh, Nick Anderson does not have a, any uh, listings on the OFAC watch list uh, before the vendor is approved. And we can add more principals if we have more, we can add more to the list, or we can just go to the next page. Final step for the vendor is to make a payment. They make a payment once a year, again, it's not per property. Uh, it is a flat fee. They can add properties later uh, if they forget to add locations. And we actually encourage that. We want to try to get contractors approved at any property where they have a chance of doing business. This becomes a benefit for the vendor. We're kind of doing some advertising because now we're showing all the managers within Morgan, hey, here's all your approved plumbers and your landscapers, and there might be possibility for you to find a vendor that you've never used before. 
So the entire registration process takes, you know, maybe 10 minutes or so. I know we've taken a little bit longer here, but I've talked on every page. Contractors can generally get through here fast. The only uh, step where they get a little bit stuck is on that producer information. And if they have their cert in front of them, they'll be able to get right through that, no problem. Okay, so I'm going to pause here for a quick second, see if anybody has any questions on the vendor registration portion of the website. Usually that's pretty self-explanatory. I do want to thank everybody for typing in your name and your property. Uh, so I've got that all on file. I'll be able to send that over to Morgan here as soon as we're done. Okay, so we're going to log in as a client. Uh, so on the top of the website is client login. Uh, all the We have over 100 users that have been set up for Morgan. I don't think you have your password instructions yet, but if you look here, if we look at the user logins, uh, we can see, oh, it looks like 263 permissions have been created. The username is going to be your email. So you can see here we have it listed in alphabetical order. Uh, you will be receiving instructions by email from RMIS on how to create your password, but your username is going to be your email. So you're able to log in, and now you can see a list of all oh, about 20 different things you can do from the client menu. You're not going to use most of these. There's only three or four that you're going to be using kind of on a daily basis, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So the probably the most common way to find vendors is the search for property. So you as a manager need to make sure that vendors are not only approved, but they're also approved at your location. So the fastest way to do that is to click search for property. You either can type in the name of your location or you can leave it blank and you can just find your property. We'll just use Brighton Gardens because I know there's a sample vendor in there. You can click your property and now you're going to be able to see all the vendors that have signed up for your specific location. So you're going to have a mix of vendors that are approved and that are non-approved. At the beginning, most of them are going to be non-certified because it's going to take a while to work with the agent to get them approved. Some vendors can get certified quickly, but a lot of times the agents make mistakes and so it's going to take a little bit longer. But you're going to be able to see every vendor that has signed up to work at Brighton Gardens. Right now we have a sample vendor in here, in here, Emily's Landscaping. Hopefully everybody can read this. I'll make it a little larger. So you're going to have an alphabetical list of all the contractors. Usually it's probably going to be two pages of vendors per property. You might expect 30, 40, 50 vendors for each location. You're going to see the requirements that Morgan has set up, uh, things like general liability, auto, do we have a valid certificate on file, have they passed the OFAC screening. Most important column for you to look at is the approved. That means a vendor has met every requirement that Morgan has created. Uh, this vendor can be uh, scheduled to come do work. They can be on the property. This is obviously a vendor that you would pay for a specific project. If you see vendors that are not approved, it's your responsibility as a manager to make sure that vendor is not on site uh, with their crew, with their van, with their tools, because there is a, there's something going on which is keeping them from being non-certified. It could be a insurance limit. It could be additional insured wording. Uh, and that is something that needs to be corrected before the contractors can be uh, used. So Emily's Landscaping, certified vendor. We can click on Emily's Landscaping. And now you're going to get some more detailed information. So you're going to see general information. You're going to see uh, property certification. You're going to be able to see uh, the kind of work that they have signed up for. This is a vendor type there, a landscaper, phone number, email. You can see they're certified. You need to make sure that they're certified at your location. Now, if we're the manager of Brighton Gardens, we already know that they are because we're looking at our property. But these are the other locations where this contractor is certified. And we know Morgan has another 100 or 150 properties that are not listed here. That means that the vendor needs to add those properties before they can be used uh, at those locations because this vendor is only certified at eight properties. W-9 information, you can see a copy of their W-9. If you open up the agreement, you can see a copy of the vendor agreement that they had signed. Principal information shows you the results of the OFAC check. You can also look at uh, the history of OFAC, meaning what were they last year and the year before and the year before that. Uh, certificate detail, this will show you all the information off the accord form, so we will key punch it in. Uh, effective date, expiration, policy, AM best, 
limits, categories, coverages, everything will be key punched in our system. You can also see images of the accord forms any time you see the word view. That means there's a certificate or an endorsement or some sort of image that was sent to us by the agent uh, that we make viewable. The one thing I want to point out is that we do monitor this expiration date. So we have a good certificate on file for this particular old landscaper. Prior to this expiration date, we will contact the agent. We will request an updated certificate for the new policy period. So ideally, we keep Emily's landscaping approved even as they get into the new policy period. Now, even though we do this ahead of time, it doesn't mean that the vendor is always going to be certified in time. There are occasions where an agent will uh, not be responsive. They will not get us a certificate in time. And there will be a gap where this vendor is actually non-certified because we're waiting for the certificate. But you can monitor all that progress through the contact history. And you can see all the work that RMIS is doing to try to keep that vendor approved uh, even as we get into a new policy period. You can also see previous accord forms by clicking on the history. Uh, and you can see other images. So with this one, we only have a sample vendor in here, so it's the exact same certificate. But over time, you'd be able to see last year and the year before that and the year before that uh, certificate. And, and that's important in the property world because there might be a claim. There might be an issue with the roof, and it's determined that the last time the roof was worked on was four years ago. Here's the information we had on file from that contractor that did that work. This might be important if there is some sort of claim. A couple other fields I want to show you here are the contact history and the insurance instructions. So contact history will be useful, especially if you're talking to a vendor that's non approved. Because what might happen is the vendor might say, hey, I, I, I know you told me that I'm not approved and that's why I can't come out with my crew, but I have no idea why I'm not approved, that nobody has told me anything, I'm a little bit in the dark, you'll be able to go look up that vendor, open up the contact history, and you'll be able to see a trail of phone calls, emails, faxes between us, the vendor, and their agent to try to get them approved. And this is a good way where you can explain to the vendor, hey, Mr. Vendor, I see that RMIS has they called you on Monday, they emailed you on Tuesday, they faxed your insurance agent on Wednesday, you were copied on it you'll be able to see all the work that we've done to try to get this contractor approved. And that'll just make that conversation a little bit easier for you to have with the contractor. Uh, keep in mind, the vendors can also go to the vendor login section. So right at the top, there's vendor login. And they can look up their status, and they can see that contact history as well. Uh, we're, we're trying to be as transparent as we can to them. There's no secrets here. We want to let them know everything we're doing to try to get them approved. Uh, sometimes this will be frustrating. A vendor will not understand why the additional insured wording is so important and why just a simple mistake can't be overlooked. They might be confused why the W-9 check is necessary or uh, why uh, just because they're a half million dollars short on a limit, why that's such a big deal. These are important things. Uh, and the contact history will show them, here's all the reasons why you're not approved. The last step is the insurance, or the last item I think is important is the insurance instructions. And that's just going to give you another look at that insurance page that we looked at during registration. Uh, and you as a manager, if you get a phone call from a vendor and the vendor says, hey, I still see I'm not approved, but I don't remember what that commercial auto limit is. Can you help me out? You can look up that vendor's account. You can get right to the insurance instructions and you can see Here's exactly what's required for commercial auto. Here's what's required for GL. This is the additional insured wording that is required on your certificate before you're approved at every one of these properties. Okay, so the insurance instructions is good information for a manager to have. Okay, so I have a question here from Jan. How are you getting the vendors? Jan, good question. So all of the current vendors that Morgan is working with now uh, will be getting a letter towards the end of the week from RMIS with specific instructions on what to do. Uh, the letter has been reviewed uh, by Kara, by Crystal, by some of the folks at Morgan we've been working with over the last few months. Uh, it'll be sent to each vendor. It's going to have their name and address on the envelope. It's going to be in an envelope that looks like it's from Morgan. Even though it's RMIS, it's going to be managing the entire send out process. So that'll be arriving uh, later this week, maybe early next week. Uh, you can 
let your vendors, especially your active vendors, know to be on the lookout for a vendor letter uh, regarding the new monitoring program. That way they at least opened up and they look at it and doesn't end up in the trash. Jan, for all of the new vendors going forward, you simply just need to refer them to the website. Again, morganvendors.com is where they're going to need to go. All on-site contractors do need to go and register and become certified. Okay, so let's look at a few other uh, reports that you can run from the client menu. Uh, another report is the search for vendors. So let's say you are the manager at that Brighton Gardens community. Uh, Emily's Landscaping is not available to come out and do work today, but you need to get a landscaper out there fast. So you can go into the vendor type search. You can select landscapers. And now you're going to be able to see every other landscaper that is signed up for Morgan. And uh, after the first few months, you're going to find many different landscapers that have signed up. Uh, you can also uh, be a little bit more specific and say, only show me the landscapers that are in uh, Michigan. And I only want to see the ones that are certified. And that will give you a smaller list. The idea here is just to provide you with additional resources. If you find a landscaper that you want to work with, you notice that your property is not one of the ones that they're certified for. You just need to contact the vendor, have them go to the vendor login, add your property, sign the new agreement, and log back out. There's no additional fees. A lot of times we can get that vendor certified within the hour, especially if we have a responsive insurance agent. We've already done the heavy lifting to get a good certificate and get a lot of the wording corrected. We just need to get a property added, and a lot of times we can do that fast. Okay. Another way you can find vendors is just the broad search for vendors search tool. And here you can search for vendors by their name, what city they work in, a zip code, uh, when they had made a payment, when they had registered if they're a minority-based business. So this is a faster way to find vendors versus going to the property and then selecting yours. You can get directly to the vendors from here. Okay, so we've been talking about all the vendors that have signed up for Morgan, but one of the things that we have provided you is a national vendor directory that you can use to find vendors that might be signed up for another RMIS customer, but not Morgan. So you're able to go into the directory, you can select a vendor type, a zip code, you can select a range, and now it's going to show you every air duct cleaning company within 50 or 25 miles of that particular zip code. You'll be able to look at the vendor, see what kind of insurance they have on file. The vendors are still going to need to sign up for Morgan so we can get them approved on your requirements, but this is at least a way of you finding other vendors that might be familiar with RMIS uh, that you're, you can see that they're certified with at least one other customer. Uh, usually that approval process is going to be a little bit quicker. So another menu item I want to talk about is this remove vendor from property. So if we go back to the uh, Brighton Gardens apartment or Brighton Gardens uh, vendor matrix. So after a couple of months, you're going to see maybe two pages of vendors that have, uh, that have signed up for this location. If you're the manager here and a whole bunch of these vendors are contractors that you're never going to work with, they're Maybe they're out of state, maybe they added your property by mistake, or maybe these are just vendors that you don't want to work with. You can remove them from your report just to kind of clean it up a little bit. Uh, it doesn't delete them from the Morgan uh, account. Uh, we're not doing anything kind of globally. It's just going to take them off your particular property matrix to kind of clean it up. And all you have to do is click the remove vendor from property uh, and uh, it'll remove him from that matrix. There's a lot of other reports that you can run from the client menu. Most of these you're not going to be using on a daily basis. You're going to be really using that search for property and the search by vendor type. But I would encourage you to log in, especially after the website is live, using your credentials and play around with some of these reports, see how they work, uh, so you can get familiar with how uh, our service runs. Okay, any questions on anything that we've talked about? Okay, looks like we are clear. No more questions. We're really 
excited about the startup process. Uh, Jan, another question, the start date. Uh, so the website will be going live Friday afternoon. Vendors will be receiving a letter probably Saturday or Monday is where the vendors are going to start receiving letters. They're going to come from our office here in Los Angeles, so it'll take a couple of days to get there. But the website will be fully operational Monday morning. That's where you're going to see probably the, uh, the biggest uh, uptick in activity. Uh, one of the things you can do to really have a strong start is for you to reach out, especially to the vendors that you're using every week, your, your landscaper, your handyman, your pool guy, your electrician, your plumber, your roofer, the vendors that you know well, and just make sure they're on the lookout for that vendor letter. Uh, if for some reason they do not get it or they don't want to wait for it, you can wait until Friday afternoon or Friday evening or maybe over the weekend or first thing Monday morning and just say, hey, Mr. Vendor, you don't need to wait for the letter because it doesn't have any sort of code that they need. It's an open site. You can just tell them to go to the Morgan Vendor website and sign up. So you can definitely help out that way. And you also need to stress to them that this is not an optional uh, program that for an on-site vendor, they do need to get registered. They do need to get certified uh, in order for them to provide service going forward. Uh, okay, so we have a couple of questions here. Uh, number one, uh, how long do they have to sign up before we can no longer use them? So I think we had set a couple of different dates. Uh, there's going to be a date that is kind of mid-December where we're going to be giving the vendors 30 days to sign up. Uh, but usually that's a little bit artificial. Uh, from a, a Morgan standpoint, it probably won't be until sometime next year that you might truly turn those vendors off. But the problem is if you tell the vendors that, hey, you have six months to register, they're all going to wait for five months and three weeks before they start. That's just, you know, kind of how they, how they operate. Uh, so the 30-day expiration or the 30-day deadline is really going to help because that will get most of your contractors in quickly so we can begin the process of getting them certified. So I think it's gonna be 30 days. Uh, okay, a couple other questions. Uh, when do vendors have to be registered before we can no longer use them? Okay, Jan, I think we covered that. Uh, another question, will there be a gap in being able to use our vendors during the switch? Do they have a time frame to complete registration? Yeah, so Megan, I think that is the, the, the same question as well. Uh, we're gonna be giving them, I think, 30 days. Uh, and then after that, maybe just put some gentle pressure that, hey, Mr. Vendor, really wants you to get in here to get registered and certified. Uh, and it's important because some vendors, is, it's going to take a little bit longer. Some vendors have an agent that makes the same, same mistake over and over and over, uh, and it's not something that we can get them certified overnight. So encourage your vendors to get in here, get registered fast. Okay, I think that is it. I really appreciate everybody's time this morning. We're excited about going live. Uh, uh, getting your, your contractors in here. Uh, we are going to be running another training session this afternoon. We're going to have two more tomorrow. My email and phone number are on the webinar invite. So if you have missed something or if you think of a question later, please let me know. I'm more than happy to help out. And I'll be getting a copy of the webinar over to the Morgan folks here this afternoon along with the attendee report so you guys can all get credit. Uh, I appreciate everybody's participation. I hope you have a great rest of the day. And uh, just want to say thank you again, and we will talk to you soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.